Okay guys, welcome to Roadworks. Uh, I'm Aaron and I'm here to talk to you guys about something that I'm sure you're all very excited about that we've been building up to, a, to for a long time. I'm here to talk to you about the Genesis kit today because we have our beta parts ready and in this video I'm going to talk you through each of the parts and we're going to install some of them in a couple of our KCO2s. So what you can see in front of you here is what the Genesis kit is going to consist of. I'm going to talk through each part individually in a couple of minutes, but as you can see it's 10 parts at the moment. Uh, the beta kits will consist of slightly more than this because there's more things uh, that we want to have people testing uh, during the beta program. and. Uh, once I've talked through each of these parts, we've got a couple of guns that we need to install parts in. We have uh, a gun that a lot of you are familiar with. You might spot the Dread logo. Um, this is basically the Rogueworks main test platform gun. Uh, this was previously in the uh, Dread stock and we've put it back into the standard stock uh, just so that we can use it for testing purposes. And the other gun that we're gonna be working on in this video is my personal KCO2 in this gorgeous Boyd's laminated stock. Um, this has currently got an RA Tech steel bolt carrier in it and a Sneakworks metal printed charging handle and it's got the old faithful combination, the RA Tech, uh, 510 millimeter 6.01 tight ball barrel with the FE70 uh, hot rubber, which was so famous for so many years. We're going to be installing a full uh, Genesis kit into this gun today. So I'm going to talk to you first about the individual parts of the kit itself. So to point through all the parts of the kit, we have the diadem extended hop wheel. We have three hop keys. Uh, we have we, this one's the bridge, this one's the arch, and this one is flat. They each have a different profile. Uh, this is the Genesis hop unit itself. And we have our CNC KC VSR aluminium cylinder air nozzle. Uh, we have a 2.5 millimeter steel pin that's knurled on one end that's going to replace the normal cross pin that goes in here that uh, retains your return spring and then we're, we're going to be including three flow restrictors as well uh, which to reduce the FPS of the gun. These drop down inside the cylinder. Uh, we've been referring to them as flow chokes. So I'm going to talk to you first about the cylinder the parts of the kit. This was the most called for. Uh, people have been asking us to do a CNC cylinder and it's been severely needed for the KCO2 for a number of years because the standard ones are so common about breaking almost clean in half around this point just here where the uh, the stop tooth on the cylinder hits the charging handle every time the uh, the piston extends the nozzle forwards. So uh, we design, designed this from the ground up. We've kept a lot of the internal dimensions so this is still fully compatible with all pistons though we've added a bit more chamfering to the edge here so it's going to be a bit less wear on pit things like piston o-rings uh, we've we've removed a lot of the the big indentations on the outside which were only there to save material on the injection molded original parts and pretty much all the rest of it has been redesigned from the ground up so this nozzle at the front has all been designed to be compatible with vsr rubbers uh, we've redesigned this uh, loading arm that collects the uh, the BBs out of the mag, so that's nice and strong. That's not going to snap off. It's not going to bend. I spent a long time redesigning the um, or perfecting the seat on the cylinder where it interfaces with the gas route on the mags. So uh, that's that should give us a much better air seal, and it's all it's all nicely rounded and chamfered and radiused so that. We, we're gonna, we made sure that we didn't want to be tearing gas routers on mags with our uprated cylinders. So that's really nice and smooth. It's got a nice rounded off edge just here so that uh, it won't be dragging on your, uh, your gas routers. Um, 
internally, it's still going to be compatible with things like the end pass, rocket valves, anything that fits inside the standard gun, yeah, this will be compatible with. So parts of the kit, we have the diadem extended hot wheel. So this piece is both longer as it has to reach down further into the hop unit because the VSR hot rubbers are smaller than KCO2 hot rubbers. And we took the opportunity to add these knurled sections that make it extend out above the rail, as you'll see later on in this video. It makes it much easier to adjust than the tiny little wheel. We know some people have expressed concerns that this takes up more rail space so that it makes it harder to fit optics, but it really only takes up like one notch of rail either side of where the, the hot wheel normally goes. And we, we are gonna be doing a, a smaller hot wheel in future that uh, will fit the standard profile so that you can get your scopes and things right up to it. But at the minute, this is what we're going with because at RogueWorks, we're all about innovation. So if we've got an opportunity to make something cooler, make it do something that it doesn't normally do, then uh, we're gonna take it. So I should say that none of these parts are in their sort of finished state, apart from maybe the, uh, the, the cylinder itself. Uh, we're still not decided whether we're gonna be anodizing the hop unit. Um, we've not decided how we're gonna be coloring the hot wheel because we have two options for material. This one is currently out of aluminium and we also have a stainless steel version of the part as well. But we've not decided which version we're gonna be using yet. Uh, that's to be decided by the beta, beta program. We increased the number of notches around uh, the circumference of the underside of the hot wheel that uh, that the clicker clicks on when you're adjusting it so this now provides a finer level of adjustment and we've made sure that all of this is brilliantly tolerant so that uh, we get minimal wiggle and that's we'll come to that with the hop keys next so we'll, we'll talk about the hop unit first so this was quite an engineering feat in itself you can see this one's marked we're currently on version 4A of the hop unit. The previous one was version 3C. We've gone through about 18 different iterations of this design to get to where we are now, which is one that we're happy for people to start testing and using. So you'll see how the bits of this fit together during the assembly when we're installing it into a gun in a few minutes. But uh, this hop unit uses a standard barrel nut. It's not in two halves, so we can better control the internal tolerances and make it just a more secure fit. So your standard barrel nut just screws into it and the installation for a barrel and hop rubber is very much the same as when you're installing normal KCO2 hop rubbers into your gun. The key difference is that these hop keys so let's see if I can show you these on the camera. This one is the bridge key. So this one applies pressure to the outer edges of the hot rubber. It has two teeth that apply pressure to the outer edges. And then if we look at this one, this one is the arch key. This one applies pressure across the whole contact area of the hot rubber. And then this one, this one is just the flat key. So this one doesn't have any contours to it. So its primary point of contact is in the center of the hot rubber and then as you apply more pressure with the hop, the contact spreads outwards. So the purpose of the three different hop keys, one applies it in the center, one applies it in the edges, and one applies it across the whole contact area. Now what you do with these, once you've got your hop rubber installed, these keys slot in this perfectly well machined hole in the top of the hop unit and you'll see better when we're installing these. 
but you can see that's just dropped in there and that's what contacts on the hot rubber itself and then when it's all installed the hot wheel screws down into the hot keys so that the twisting and wiggling action on the hot wheel is separate to any motion on the hop keys themselves. So we've got this 2.5 millimeter, 16 mil long steel pin. This is slightly thicker than the standard crossbody pin that we use, that the KCO2 uses as standard. Uh, that's so that it spreads any uh, force on your piston return spring, decreases the wear, and it's, it's less likely to bend. And that fits that fits in, in the crossbody of the cylinder and we'll come to how to install that properly later on. And lastly, we've got these three flow restrictors or flow chokes, different sizes. And these drop down in front of the rocket valve at the very front of the inside of the nozzle. Uh, so we've got three different bores for these and the idea is that these reduce the power level of your KCO2 more reliably than if you're using an N-Pass and it's a cheaper way than having to buy multiple rocket valves. Now the, the exact power levels for each of these aren't set yet but the idea is that they'd give you three regularly achievable brackets so let's say like the largest one would be like 450 feet per second, then 400 feet per second, and 350 feet per second. You know, just normal brackets like that. But uh, depending on how the beta test goes, the feedback that we get from that will be helping us out with what actual size we're going to be making these. So that is the 10 components of the Genesis beta or the Genesis kit. Um, we're going to talk briefly now about the additional parts that are going to be included with the beta program. So in the beta program we're going to be sending 12 parts out to each of the people selected so you'll notice we have two cylinders. Now these are from different manufacturers with very different price points. They're both supposed to be the same design. One's more expensive and one significantly cheaper. Uh, we've marked them with different make maker marks on the bottom so that we can identify them during testing. Now uh, the idea is that this one is the is the one that we know works but it's also really expensive and that price would be reflected in the retail price of the kit. So this one is the same design but made to a slightly cheaper standard. Now if we can establish that this is still acceptable it means we'll be able to reduce the overall price of the kit by something like £30. It's, it's a fairly big margin because these are I'd say at least four times more expensive to make than this version. So we want the beta testers to decide which version of uh, the nozzle they prefer the most and which one they think works the best. We'll also be including two of the hop wheels, one made of stainless steel and one made of aluminium, purely so that we can figure out which one people prefer, whether there's any sort of durability because these parts are gonna be sticking out the top of the gun, they're gonna be exposed. We wanna know if this little aluminium stem is going to be too vulnerable sticking up above the rail whether it's going to bend and the stainless steel one whether it causes extra wear on parts or whether it actually warrants the uh, strong material so they're the extra parts that we're going to be including in the beta kit so i'm going to put these parts to one side now and we're going to get to installing uh, an updated hop unit into the Rogueworks test gun which has already got a Genesis kit in but we do need to swap out the barrel uh, or take the barrel out so that we can change the hop unit. Okay. So first up we've got the Rogueworks test gun platform. This has already got a Genesis kit in it. We just need to be swapping the hop unit for the updated model. Now this has got in it a Maple Leaf 70 degree Autobot hot rubber with a Maple Leaf Crazy Jet 380mm 
um, in a barrel. So it's already got the parts in it that we designed the Genesis kit around as they're very popular and they have the most common form factor for VSR type parts. So via the magic of editing, I'm going to strip this gun down to um, get rid of all the scope, the furniture and the uh, get it down to just the parts that we want to be taking apart. Okay. Ta-da! So, I'm going to take the muzzle brake off as well. Mm -hmm. Lovely gold twister. Put that to one side. And I'm going to remove the trigger mech by pushing the pins out as normal. I'll stick them in my nice magnetic dish over here. Take the trigger mech off. Put that to one side. And we're going to remove the bolt carrier assembly. Yeah, this is one of our original, uh, I think this is a Type 12 bolt actually. Uh, it was one of the first ever night wind bolt carriers. As you can see, it's already got a, uh, a KC VSR Rogue Works uh, nozzle on it. This has got the standard rocket valve inside. You can't really see very well in there, and it's got what color? A green uh, Rogueworks piston. We've been using this a lot recently, but we don't currently have a reason to take this part uh, unless I want to put a flow restrictor in there, but we don't right now. So pop that over to one side, and I'm going to remove the recoil spring because it'll just get in the way. Put these up here. Oh yeah, you can see this gun has one of our hardened tool steel bolt stops. This one's actually a prototype. This one I grinded down myself, um, but we'll have those for sale very soon. Uh, probably after the Genesis kit launch, that design's ready to go and they, they work brilliantly. As you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's perfectly straight. And so this has probably had a couple of thousand rounds through it already. And it looks like I've only just put it in. If we pick up the bolt, see if there's any wear on there. It looks fine. <clears throat> so we want to be getting to the hot unit. So I'm going to remove the hot wheel. Uh, this one, you can tell by how heavy it is. This one's a stainless steel hot, hot wheel. And a personal habit of mine, I always roll some blue tack into the threads for the hop screw just makes it nice and stiff gives it a, like a nice smooth action when you're adjusting it stops it rattling around at all if there's any sort of play in the mechanism it's just a habit um, i'm going to be releasing these barrel clamp screws big screwdriver because i use extended screws so I can get the clamp tighter. See, they're a lot, a lot longer, about 10 mil longer than the standard barrel clamp studs because KJW put extra threads into the receiver and didn't use them. So it's up to people like us to try and find these little hidden extras. Right, so that's the barrel clamp. Now I've got to take the five rail screws off. You'll notice that I'm using, uh, although I've got the shorter 380mm barrel, I'm still using the one piece RA Tech uh, metal rail. Just because it gives a, a much more solid build and you can put proper optics onto it instead of the plastic one. So the front two rail screws that go down into the barrel are always longer. And these three are always a bit shorter. I have these really tight because you should, well, you guys shouldn't over tighten them, but all of the rail and barrel screws on this gun 
and every other KCO2 that I work on are helicoiled. They have steel thread inserts, which means they're, they're a lot more difficult to damage the threads on. Uh, you have to buy a special kit with tools. Got to be careful not to lose. Hop clicker. There it is. These two little pieces. A little brass ferrule and spring. I'm going to put these in my little magnetic dish over here. So yeah, these and take the rail off with the screw still attached. I'm just going to put it to one side over here. And that lets us separate the barrel. As I was saying, if you can see on the camera, this receiver has got shiny steel thread inserts in the holes. And this barrel has got extra holes drilled into it here and here so that it will accept the uh, the metal rail and these two holes have got metal have got steel thread inserts into them so that you can get them nice and tight so that's our receiver stripped down you can see it's got one of the rogue works uh, teflon buffer pins in it i'm gonna put that to one side over here and that leaves us with our barrel assembly as you can see uh, this hop unit Put it the right way up for you. It says version 3C. If I can get the engraving to show up. Version 3C is engraved onto the side of the hop unit. And the one that we want to be putting in it is version 4A. So we need to be separating the barrel out. You can see that this one's had a lot of machining work done to it because the fit wasn't perfect on this version. I had to do a lot of sanding. And you'd be amazed the amount of difference that 0.2 of a millimeter makes when you're trying to get a uh, tapered flat sided <laughs> cone to interface with the receiver perfectly and still have the, uh, the hop key hole for the hop wheel line up with the hole in the receiver just here. And then when you put the rail on, the hop screw still has to fit down through the rail, through the receiver, into the hop unit and line up perfectly with the hole in the hop key. It's quite a challenge, but you probably can't see in there. But this one fits perfectly because I had to hand machine it down and then take specs from it to make the new version. But unfortunately, an internal flaw on this version of hop unit means that all the shots curve off to the left because this keyway that aligns the VSR hot rubber inside it is about five degrees off axis. <clears throat> so a neat trick because this barrel is fully lined with Rogueworks barrel spacers which make it quite difficult to extract the inner barrel from here. So. A neat trick is to use an old inner barrel, such as your 250mm brass standard KCO2 barrel. You go to this end, slot it in, and gently apply pressure. He says confidently. There we go. And that just lets you slide it out slide the uh, barrel backwards and then you can grip it and pull it all the way out if you want to. We don't actually need to pull it all the way out. You can see that this barrel has our old uh, nylon barrel spacers with tape either side. Though I'll show you all about that when I come when we come to install the full Genesis kit in the other gun that we're going to work on today. So uh, for now this is enough access for me because all we're changing is this hop unit. So. <clears throat> Get your extremely high quality spanner. Mm -mm. Definitely not in a free toolkit. Just to slack that off. Just unscrew the barrel nut.
pull that up and then ease out the uh, barrel and hot rubber. If this hot rubber looks dirty and horrible, it's because it is. It's uh, seen a lot of punishment as uh, this hot rubber was the one that we were using or that I was using to do the majority of the design work when we were designing the Genesis kit. So I don't actually need to take that off there now that I think about it. Because all we're doing is taking the old hop unit, putting it to one side and getting the new hop unit. And all we're going to do, oh, we do actually need the hop key from the old one. Let's not waste parts. So we've got an arch hop key in here. I'm just going to poke that out. I put a little bit of silicon grease on there just so that it uh, immobilizes any movement. We actually designed <laughs> this hole for the hop key to have a tolerance of just 0.1 millimeter in each direction. So you divide that by two essentially. When you put this hop key into the hop unit, it is the, uh, pretty much the tightest fit I could possibly make it. There is 0 0.05 millimeters of clearance either side of that hop key. It's right on the edge of, of what we can actually manufacture without prices going through the roof and us starting to get quality problems. So that's a 20th of a millimeter of tolerance on that. So just even just a light coating of silicon grease is enough to give it a lovely tight fit. And then the hot rubber just slides back in. You can see when it's properly seated through this slot because that's the slot that's made for the um, the locator keyway thing I think it's called for the um, for the hot rubber. And then we just slide that back down. This uses the original barrel nut from your KCO2 because it's an excellently machined part. There's almost no play on there at all. And we just screw it back in. Give it a little nip with the spanner. It doesn't need to be super tight because the threads are so fine that you can damage them if it's over tightened anyway. And with that barrel nut cinched all the way down, the hot rubber in there has got no play on it at all. We designed it with like 0.1 of a millimeter to account just for tolerances in the hot rubber, but it is a perfect fit. You can't twist it side to side. There's no lateral movement at all. There's there's no wiggle like that. It is the best possible fit that we could machine into this. I'm just going to take this hotkey out a sec just so I can check the alignment. Needle nose pliers won't do it. We're going to have to use one of the hot wheels. Here's one I prepared earlier. And if we look down into that hole, you can see the pen lines on the hot rubber, which I just colored in for the uh, the kind of the little grooves that run along the top edge of some VSR hot rubbers to show where the contact patch is and to give it like a pivot point for the rubber when it flexes. And they're perfectly centered in there. So. What we're going to do now is get this hot rubber, uh, hot unit, and barrel assembly slotted back into this outer barrel. Now, this is the one, one of the few times where getting the alignment right is quite important. So, you want to be looking lengthways. How's the best way to show this on the camera? You want to be looking down along the barrel because this hop keyhole should line up perfectly straight with the screw holes along your barrel to make sure that you've got everything nice and straight. 
and this can take quite a lot of back and forth I normally just hold it up in front of my eye and shuffle the barrel backwards and forwards quite a lot until I'm satisfied that I've got it nice and straight I've just got one eye shut and I'm just looking down the length of the barrel shuffling it backwards and forwards until everything lines up and that looks spot on to me without any internal keyways in the uh, the outer barrel there's no way for us to key the orientation of the hop unit to the vertical alignment of the barrel we'd have to start getting people to modify the inside of their outer barrels so that we could put any sort of alignment on the hop unit so that you don't have to do this by eye but it's quite easy to judge really you're just looking down the length of the barrel making sure that all these holes are at the 12 o'clock position when you look down along the length of it and that just re lets you know that uh, your hot rubber is aligned vertically this is really the only time when there's any sort of room for error <clears throat> so I'm happy that that is in now with the uh, with the new hot unit so I'm just going to reassemble all of this okay so we'll get the barrel slot it in there and as we expected the new hop unit is now a perfect fit and the hop keyhole still lines up beautifully with where the hop uh, with where the hot wheel is going to insert into it and you can see the the new hop unit and hot rubber protruding through into the receiver by 1.6 millimeters because that's the gap between the bolt and the front of the nozzle when it's installed because for your bolt to recoil the front of the nozzle needs something to push against when it extends like that if there's any sort of gap then you'd get a sloppy bolt return but I shouldn't be telling you these secrets because it's taken me months to figure them out so um, first up I'm gonna put the rail back on you know what actually you guys I'm, I'm not gonna bore you with the reassembly of your KCO2 because at this once we've changed the hop unit you you guys know how to put your KCO2s back together if if you don't know how to reassemble your KCO2 when you've just taken it apart and watch me taking it apart then you're probably not skilled enough to be doing this so I'm just going to skip this and we'll get on to the next gun once this is magically reassembled so I'm going to wave my magic KCO2 in a barrel magic wand and it's just going to rebuild itself Tokyo Marui yeah oh that only appears to have got us halfway. Okay, uh, let's try again. KJW, ah! There we go, that did it. Okay, so this gun is back together. This has now got the latest uh, Genesis kit version in it. So we'll be doing a lot of testing with this one because it's got the standard rocket valve, no flow choke, and a 380 mil barrel. Uh, with the arch key so we can do some testing on this and then we can change the setup around do some more testing uh, there's going to be lots to do with each of these guns it's going to be a good time next All right. All right. this one is going to be a little bit more involved because I've got to take apart the bolt carrier and I've got to take out the barrel assembly um, because we've got to take all the barrel spaces off that are in this gun and we're going to put them onto this nice gorgeous 510 millimeters I don't know how many inches that is because I don't live in the dark ages but uh, 510 millimeter maple leaf crazy jet barrel and we have another blue um, maple leaf autobot 70 degree hot rubber that's what's going to be going in this one and um, as I said this one has a old uh, steel RA tech uh, bolt carrier in it and a uh, I can't remember what that is I think it's like a bronze steel um, sneakworks charging handle 
it's been like this for maybe three years or so. I've only added like cosmetic things like the charging handle. It's got a hell of a clunk to it. Now, I wanted to put a Rogueworks heavyweight kit in this and I have actually got a Rogueworks heavyweight 303 stainless steel bolt carrier. Yes, yeah, serial number one, bitches. Keep the best for myself. And it's got a, a stainless steel KF piston in here as well. And you can see I've already installed this bolt with um, the KC VSR nozzle. So this one, this bolt assembly is ready to go. It's got an impasse in it. It's it's this this is good to go. So we'll be testing this one because this is like the full heavyweight setup. But we also need to test the kit with bolt carriers that are not our own unfortunately uh, just to see if there's any quirks that come up from the uh, any design incompatibilities let's say from other companies from misguided people using our beautiful Rogueworks Genesis KCO2 parts in with with other, other KCO2 parts that are either standard or are not from ours. I mean, not everybody can afford everything, so you know we have to account for stuff. So what we're going to do, we're going <laughs> to we're going to commit some heresy. We're going to install uh, a Genesis kit into the RA Tech steel bolt carrier, and we're going to put um, we're going to take out the RA Tech barrel that's in here. And we're going to replace it with the maple leaf one and we're going to put a genesis uh, hop unit in there we're going to get rid of the standard hop wheel and we're going to put uh, the genesis just just basically a full genesis kit installation so uh, strap in grab yourself a beer and you know crack a fresh one that's what i'm doing because this installation is going to be a little bit more involved so because um, we're going to have to strip the bolt down and we're going to have to take the barrel assembly fully out and move the um, move the barrel spaces around so I'm going to wave my magic wand um, to get this down to the receiver because you guys don't need to see me taking out this screw and taking off this rail and you know separating this beautiful, beautiful stock that I've built so we're gonna wave, wave the magic wand again. So uh, what, what magic words we use this time? Uh, KCO2. Ta-da! Okay, let's keep going. Uh, KJW. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I am unfortunately gonna to have to turn the light on. Let's see how bad this looks. Oh Jesus, the lighting is horrible. That is terrible. Oh well, we uh, won't be able to see otherwise. So as I said, this sucker hasn't been taken apart for quite some time. All grease on there, man. All grease. So there's your old RA Tech steel bolt carrier, which was like 90 pounds and weighs a frickin' ton. Uh, Though ours is actually heavier because we used a denser steel, and ours is obviously cooler with loads of design improvements. But this old brick, this was your only option when uh, your old bolt carrier broke back in the day. Thankfully, you've got a few options out there now, of which I'd like to think my own design is the best. But, uh, you know, personal choice. So this gun is not as clean as the other one that we just taken apart. So we're going to be stripping that bolt down. And uh, we've also got, um, oh, I did recently install this receiver. Also has a hardened tool steel bolt stop, except this one is the production one. This is the only one in the world right now because we only uh, bought one prototype of it because there was only small mods. So. My own personal KCO2 has the only production Rogueworks tool steel hardened bolt stop in the world at the moment because uh, the one in the other gun was hand machined by myself 
and then we used the spec from that to uh, to, to redesign this one. So uh, yeah, perks of the job. <clears throat> Let's get the uh, recoil spring out. The old Sneakworks KR charging handle. We're going to take the hot wheel out. As you can see, let's, can we get that on the camera? Probably not focused, but it's got the solder blob extension mod on the end of the Hot Wheel to give it the extra reach for the hot rubber pressure because this is originally an ASG KCO2 which was the one most common to have no hop from out of the box so uh, I got really good at doing um, the solder blob mod for these so we'll stick that on the dish over there okay so that's the hot wheel off that's the bolt out uh, we just need to separate the barrel take the rail off take the hop clamp off uh, take the barrel clamp off sorry so well, uh, where's my big screwdriver? <laughs> we'll get on with that. And that should let us separate the old barrel and receiver. So I'm gonna put the receiver to one side because it's clean enough and there's nothing else that we need to do to that. So, uh, so we're gonna move on to the barrel here. So. This could be quite a challenge because it is full, end to end, almost end to end, with um, our nylon barrel spaces. So there's going to be a lot of friction in here. And uh, if you've read the description of uh, the barrel spaces, I learned that the inside of these RA Tech barrels is about um, uh, about 0.5 millimeters smaller than standard. So I'm going to use the same trick again. I've got an old brass barrel, stick it in the end, and that means that you're only applying pressure directly onto the crown of the other barrel, and you just use it like a ramrod. <laughs> Ta-da! Look, easy. <laughs> oh my god, so fake. Anyway, oh look at this beauty. All the barrel spaces. Oh. They have not been out in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see in the description for these things, um, you slide the barrel spaces on and then you put tape either side so that they stay in position when you insert them into the barrel. And you also have to make sure that none of the barrel spaces line up with where the screw holes are in the barrel. Otherwise you end up trying to screw your rail back on and you're actually screwing down into the um, into your barrel spaces and it makes a bit of a mess especially if you crush one in place because then you uh, you can't get it back out again trust me I know so uh, this is the mighty 510 millimeter 6.01 RA tech barrel with one of the legendary fe70 bookings so uh, yeah if all goes to plan I'll have made this setup obsolete. So you don't need to watch me taking all this old tape off and removing these barrel spaces. So again, I'm going to use the uh, the magic of editing to uh, whip these off. Okay, we're going to put the barrel to one side for a little bit because it's messy as hell. All the old tape that I put either side of the barrel spaces uh, has kind of jellified and needs uh, cleaning off with some white spirits. So we're going to look at the main, the main thing that we want to focus on for this part of the build video, and that is disassembling the bolt and putting in your uh, Genesis kit parts. So, first step, I said first step is removing this roll pin. It is not pulling your freaking nozzle out so that you can try and get to the cross pin that goes through and holds the retaining pin in, because that is pretty much the first thing everybody does is try and pull the nozzle off. That is why you end up ruining your return spring and why you, we see posts day in, day out on the owner's group of people saying, ah, oh, I've wrecked spring, whatever it is. Was it 26? I can't remember. So first step 
remove the roll pin. I'm going to do it properly with a block of wood, which appears to be luminously glowing in this light. Thank you very much, Death Lights. How does it look if I turn them off? Oh man, it's dark. Come on, camera, adjust yourself. That's not that bad. Okay. I'm going to do this with a 4mm punch. In ammo. Uh, I've got this block of wood with a hole in it. Almost like I do this on a regular basis. Let me get the punch. Popper in there. Ta-da! One roll pin. Well done, block of wood. Well done, hammer. You can retire for a minute. Take the punch out. And we should. Oh man, look at my gun, Matt. It's getting all dirty. More beer. Ah, that's better. Suddenly I don't care. We should just be able to ease out ye old piston and nozzle assembly from ye olde bolt carrier. This really has not been taken apart for like a couple of years, probably. Look at that PTFE tape around the tail. That's nasty. Yeah. Let's put the bolt carrier to one side and it is now safe to push out the little pin here. How about the yellow pokey tool? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Push the pin out. Pull her out. Do not lose pin. Put pin in magnetic dish. See the small pin attempting to escape out the tail of the piston. Also in the magnetic dish. Piston now comes out. Return spring. Man, this thing is a classic. So this is a handmade uh, Kevin Forney stainless steel piston. Oop, Christ, don't drop it. From back in the day when Kevin was still machining these suckers by hand. I'm sure he still does occasionally, but Rogue Works kind of bought the uh, design off of him just because he couldn't keep up with the demand. So it wasn't like we were just trying to buy him out, we were just trying to help the community by like buying the design off of Kevin so that we could make them faster using our factories. Piston return spring. God knows how many years that old that is. Still in perfect working order. See people, it is possible not to trash them. Let's take this opportunity to put a new O-ring on. Yeah man, off you come. That's a new one. Get a bit of silicon grease. Lube her up. Slot her in place. Very nice, very nice. Well, the ubiquitous KCO2 nozzle. Uh, I think I replaced this one not too long ago. Oh yeah, forgot about these parts. Here's your impasse and impasse spring. So yeah, these are obsolete now. So uh, I've got like a whole bag of these if anyone wants one. Uh, we'll probably put them on the Rogue Works shop for sale at some point because uh, <laughs> we don't need them. <laughs> we got these. So uh, we're specifically doing this bolt because we want to put one of the cheaper uh, manufactured nozzles that we've got into it because the other heavyweight bolt has got one of the more expensive ones. So we need a comparison bolt. We're gonna take this heavyweight bolt and we're gonna put the cheaper nozzle in it and use that for testing comparison as well. We're gonna put the largest flow restrictor that we've got, just to see what effect it has. Because with the 510 mil barrel that's going into this gun, we're expecting the power to be astronomical. So uh, this would make sense to be the first one to test having a flow choke in it. So you've got to make sure you get it the right way around because it is recessed on one side. So I'm actually going to put this on the end of a pokey tool. Slot her in there. Don't know if you can see that. 
goes right through to the end and then just sits in the end of the nozzle. And then we can drop the end pass spring back in there. Oops, the end pass itself. And once you've got the flow restrictor in there, the um, the spring from your rocket valve or end pass is what holds it in position, stops it from slipping out of where it seats. Right, so now comes one of the fun parts. So you get your new knurled pin that's knurled on one end, comes with your Genesis kit. And you pop it in one side. It's going to be a tight fit because you know, it has to be. It's supposed to be gas tight. <clears throat> uh, if you can see down in the hole now, yeah, you can see. <clears throat> you can see that the pin is protruding into the bore of the cylinder and I've got the rocket valve or end pass hooked underneath it. And you wanna leave it at that halfway point because, well, actually once you've got it underneath, you want it, you wanna go a little bit further across because what you've got to do in a minute is put the piston back in and you've got to hook your piston return spring onto that pin whilst it's still halfway across. So again, being as light as you can. There we go, you'll feel the pin give a little bit. If you look inside now, you can see it's about halfway across. So if you then get small tail pin from your piston and get your piston return spring get that back in there little pokey tools are very useful for these sort of jobs I suppose you could call them picks or probes So the piston return spring is retained now. And then what you want to do, I should probably pause a minute because I want it, I need to grease up the inside of this new cylinder. So again, this is with silicon gun grease. Because we're greasing up a rubber O-ring. And then being very careful not to lose your tail pin, we're gonna make the piston and the cylinder. And that is a beautiful fit. And we're now working through this gas port here because this is where we've got to do a little bit more fiddly work. So we can now look in through the hole and see the return spring sticking out the front of your piston. You've got to hook it over that pin that we put halfway across. I think we got it. Yeah, there we go. I doubt you'll be able to see that in there. So we've got the loop end of the piston return spring hooked over the pin that's halfway across inside the cylinder. Okay, so now we can continue to knock the pin the rest of the way across. So I'm doing this very lightly with a hammer and then when the pin starts to get close to the body of the cylinder I'm going to switch over to using the punch. Because the last thing you want to do is hit your nice shiny new cylinder with a hammer. My centered punch here. So we now have the cylinder assembly with, um, so this, if you look down inside the nozzle, uh, where's the camera, there's the camera. You can see down inside the nozzle, we now have a flow restrictor. Uh, this is the largest one that's held in place by the impasse spring. 
and we have the impasse in there but it's uh, in the ma maximum power setting so that we can see what effect the uh, flow restrictor has we've got the stainless steel uh, original Kevin piston in there and we've got the larger two and a half mil knurled um, pin hammered through the aluminium cylinder using a punch so now we need some PTFE around the tail here and then we can get it reinstalled into the bolt like so, so we're going to take this so this PTFE helps to snug the fit of the piston into the bolt carrier and it also helps to create a gas seal around the rear pin of the piston as long as you can get it flat enough it should just fit straight back into the bolt before I put that back in I'm actually going to grease the outside of this and because it is now a metal cylinder going into a metal bolt we can actually use proper lithium gun grease or well it's not lithium it's uh, this horrible grey stuff uh, molybdenum disulfide which is a, a, it's a type of teflon and I've already got it all over my fingers which is fantastic so we don't you hardly need much at all here this is probably way too much I just stuck my finger in the pot and instantly regretting it so let's see how this fits in here now ah oh, beautiful lovely and now we're going to get a roll pin hammered back in to complete the uh, reassembly of our bolt carrier so I've actually got a nice new roll pin over here we can hammer in most of the way and then she's a punch to tighten it up at the end there we go and is this the four mil yeah four mil punch that's it there we go lovely and that is a genesis installed KCVSR cylinder in an RA Tech bolt carrier. Okay, so we're back to the barrel now. Uh, here is the mighty uh, RA Tech 601 510mm type ball barrel. As you can see, we've stripped all of the uh, barrel spaces off of it. We're just going to open it up now because we need the barrel nut from this barrel. And that is actually the only thing that we need from this assembly because the barrels now obsolete the hot rubber is obsolete and this hot unit is obsolete as well so crack that off with a spanner and there we go that is the mighty FE70 hot rubber obsolete that is the barrel nut that we need from this assembly so this 601 barrel going in the spares box hot unit going in the spares box hot rubber going in the spares box and now we're gonna go back in with this maple leaf 510 and the autobot 70 degree so by the magic of editing, I'm gonna put these barrel spacers onto this barrel and get it ready for installation. Okay guys, so that is the new Maple Leaf Crazy Jet barrel with all the barrel spacers on it with tape either side to keep them in position. And now we can go ahead and stick the hot rubber on. Oh wait, we forgot. You don't put the hot rubber on yet because you gotta put the barrel nut on first. Then the hot rubber. Like that. And then we get the nice shiny new hot unit. I'm just gonna lick 
the outside of the hot rubber just to ease it in there a little bit, that's all it needs. And that way around. In it goes. Beautiful and snug. And then we can just do up the bow nut. And super high quality spanner. Just a little pinch at the end. Don't need to go crazy. It's not gonna come undone. And now we've got to try and get this back in here. So I'm gonna put some, uh, maybe some silicon oil, I think, on the outside of these O-rings because this RA Tech barrel is a real pain to try and get stuff back into. Because <laughs> it's just a little bit tighter than standard. So then we get the barrel. <clears throat> in we go. Come on. <clears throat> is why you put the tape either side of the barrel spacers because that's what it gets stuck on when you're reinserting it. So as with the other installation we're trying to make sure that the hop keyhole on top of the hop unit here lines up with the barrel holes on top because this is the only bit of manual alignment that you have to do. Okay so I'm happy that that hop unit is lined up with the screws. So now I'm going to pick a hop key. So far just for consistent test comparison I'm going to go with an arch key again. Uh, a little bit of silicon grease on it and just drop it in there. Nice and smooth. And now the barrel is ready for reassembly with the receiver. So we're gonna fast forward to that. So that is our receiver back together again with the uh, new barrel Maple Leaf Crazy Jet 510 and Maple Leaf Autobot Hot Rubber, the 70 degree one. And we've got the Genesis Hop Unit in there. And we can drop in the recoil spring. I'm going to keep the uh, the old Sneak Works charging handle, and I'm going to put a couple of drops of oil in here. It's just silicon oil, just so things run a little bit smoother. And we're going to drop the RA Tech Steel bolt, which has now got the KC VSR cylinder in it and it's still got the impasse and it's got the uh, flow restrictor the largest sized one and the Kevin Forney steel piston so we're going to drop that back in and straight away I can tell that is a lovely lovely fit so uh, just the rest of the gun to put back together now and there we go. My gun, I've still got to put the rail and stuff back on, but uh, another gun with a Rogueworks Genesis kit installed, this time with a 510mm Maple Leaf Crazy Jet. Ready to begin testing.